the 315. Here's Brian Higgins. Here I am. Here we are. Rolling along on this Thursday. The Masters is still happening. You better believe it's happening. More updates as events warrant. In fact, in our next break, you'll get our Westwood One update brought to you by Burdick Toyota. You know, our, our next guest here, I, I'm going to bet that he's been watching the Masters uh, today. I'm going I'm to uh, prove me wrong. Kyle Federley with us. You, you've been watching the Masters today, Kyle, haven't you? I, I mean, you've been hard at work all day long, I'm sure, but you, you definitely have been watching the Masters. Is that this week? <laughs> did, <laughs> did, did we slide this one past you? We, we slid the Masters past you? No, we got it on. I'll tell you, I liked, uh, you know, a bu- I had a bunch of our student football managers in here, and they know I golf, so... I, they said, uh, who do you like? And I said, well, it's hard not to like, I said, the defending champ, especially since he's just knocking it out of the park, it seems like, every week. And it's hard not to like Ram. I call him Ram because it drives my golf partner crazy. Uh, and uh, and the other guy I like personally is uh, Jordan Spieth because he always plays well here. For whatever for whatever reason, my long shot would have been uh, Max uh, Max Homa. Homa was having a good round. I didn't see where he ended up. He he vanished. Uh, where did he go? I lost him on the leaderboard. Speed's yeah, doing well. I don't, I, yeah, I haven't really been following it that close, Frank. Because we've been. I got to go to Princeton tomorrow, and uh, the gals. I got to get them out to CNS. So, a lot going on in the lacrosse world here. <laughs> that there is. Spieth just made the turn. He's four under. He just went through nine. But yes, we, we, we did not have Kyle on to talk about golf. We could, uh, but we, we have you on to talk about lacrosse. You're going out of Princeton. Man, it's been a minute. Uh, that, I mean, this used to be an every uh, year thing. What, what do you think this is going to be like to have you know, the old rivals Princeton back on the schedule this year? Yeah, I think it's great. Class of 52 uh, stadium down there. It's a lot of tradition, and I'm excited to have Princeton on the schedule without question. I mean, during the 90s, Brian, these were the two teams that ruled college lacrosse, so Syracuse and Princeton. So, uh, I mean, I think they won all but one title or two titles in the decade of the 90s. And uh, so, you know, it, it was quite the uh, quite the dominance of uh, that. Uh, the, nor- the northern schools were taking control back then. So it's great to be uh, rivaled up with them again. Princeton's got a good team. I think we have a good team. We're definitely getting better. Uh, and it's a big game for both for both squads, without question. Yeah, I mean, Princeton's a good team. They have not had great results this year. They had some uh, tough losses early in the season, have had some injuries, so we'll see how they're uh, doing this weekend. I forget how long this ran up to, but it was a very long streak of either Princeton won the title or their season ended losing to Syracuse. I mean, it was like a 15-year streak or, or something crazy like that from the 90s uh, through the early 2000s. But you, you said it, Kyle. Syracuse is playing better here this year than last under Gary Gate. Is it just the face-offs you, you feel holding it back right now, or, or or is there something more to it at this point? Well, I, yeah, obviously anybody can see it's, you know, we're struggling at the face-off circle without question. But I think a lot of it, Brian, is 18-year-olds against 22-year-olds. Uh, most of it. It's a young squad. And the other thing, too, is, you know, you've got a different mentality and a different culture that Gary Gate, Dave Petromella, and Pat uh, March have brought in to this, you know, the new era, so to speak. And I think, uh, you know, it's the combination of the young guys, or they're excited to get out there and play, but the problem is they're young, and experience is the biggest factor in this game with older kids playing against younger kids. And the other thing is learning the new system and, you know, kind of getting the old system out of yourself and trusting in the new system. I think that's the big word is trust the new system, trust the game plan. And and, and you saw last week uh, with Notre Dame that uh, the first seven minutes of the game, it was five to nothing Notre Dame. Syracuse was playing one-on-one defense. And they, there was a TV timeout. And then, you know, Dave Petromella walked over and says, fellas, if you're going to play one-on-one defense, we're going to give up 30 goals. He says, trust the game plan, trust the, what we're doing. And the kids did. And the thing that's amazing, Brian, is from the 739 mark on of the first period to the 11-minute mark, 11-11, actually, of the fourth period, Syracuse only gave up five goals. That's, that's, and I'll take that against a team like Notre Dame any day of the week. And then, of course, we struggled. We could, you know, for whatever reason, we couldn't win a faceoff, couldn't get the ball. And you know what? I, I said, uh, I said to, to Tim, uh, my broadcast partner, I said, "Look, it, 
if you gave Syracuse the ball that many times in the last 11 minutes, the score would have been reversed because, honestly, our offense is lethal. You look at our shooting percentage, shots on goal is an incredible 68%. Wow. Our, 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 our team is very lethal on offense, but you got to have the ball. That's the key. Yeah, I mean, shots on goal, I'd say, you know, like, if you get it to anything that starts with a six, that's that's pretty solid. 68 is very high. Um, I, I don't know if they, you know, based on the way the game ended, I'm not going to say that Syracuse would have won the game if this play hadn't happened. But that the Finn Thompson not goal, goal, not goal that led to a fast break, a Notre Dame the other way, you know, we, we've seen a lot of lacrosse, Kyle. I had never seen anything quite like that. Uh, before, can, can you take us into that? And like that—that that was a really weird play last week. Well, here's here's the rule, just so everybody's clear. And it's a stupid rule, but it's a rule. <laughs> okay, so let me qualify my comment. The rule in lacrosse is if the ball is stopped out or, or in the stick outside the plane of the goal, the goal mouth. Okay, and it, 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 even if it's carried into the goal, it's called a save as long as it doesn't come out of the stick, which to me is in, is asinine. It really is. But that's the rule. Now, when they showed the replay, and Tim and I watched it up in, the, up in our booth, uh, Tom White was nice enough to get us a monitor in our, in our booth, and they showed the replay five times. Not only was uh, Liam Entman, the goalie for Notre Dame, his stick, in the cage, what happened was as Finn Thompson came across, he deked him with a fake uh, down low, and Entman fell back, lost his footing, and fell down. And then he went up high, but Entman put his stick up, but his stick was in the net, mm. okay, in the across the plane of the goal. It was clear. And then obviously, when he comes down, his whole upper body and the whole stick is in the net. And the ref who's standing right at the hash mark, five yards away, well. He ruled it no goal. He said he he saved it outside the goal, and it's hard to believe from bad, for even from a bad angle that we had uh, from the shot. It's hard to believe that he could make a call like that. But hey, in real time, that's what he saw, and you got to live with it. And you know, the bottom line was that that was the turning point of the game because if you go up thirteen to eleven, there, I'm not again like you said. I'm not going to say we win the game. But now you've got the dome in full throat, 6,000 people. The, the team is energized. They're, they've come back from down five to up two. And now the pressure, the heat, and the pressing begins by Notre Dame to try, to try and even it up and get back. And they're good enough to do that type of thing. But I thought it was a huge turning point in the game and very costly, obviously, for, for Syracuse. Yeah, I mean, literally, they go down the field. They scored a few seconds later. Like, the Orange are ce- literally celebrating at one end of the field. It turns into a goal a- at the other well, end. So it's not like you even had a chance to, like, slow down the momentum at that point. Well, the amazing thing is credit to Notre Dame players for they, you know, when they, when the ref blew, you know, when the ref, the ref came in blowing his whistle, no goal, okay, he, he and left, the, the goalie, Entman, picked up the ball, Immediately outletted, outletted, our outletted the ball. Our our players were flat-footed. They raced down the field and scored. In fact, the referee that called no goal hadn't even crossed uh, out of that the defensive box because mm. our players were arguing with him. So, hey, that's the way it is. That's the way it's called. Live with it. And move on. And uh, they will move on to Princeton this week. And my goodness, th- this stretch, and it started last week with Notre Dame, but the closing stretch of Notre Dame, Princeton, Carolina, Virginia, and Duke. I mean, this is as tough, it feels like, of a five-game stretch that many anybody in the country is going to play all, all year. H- how can the Orange survive this, this stretch? I mean, obviously you want to try to win uh, a couple of games to give yourself half a crack at the playoffs, but m- my goodness, th- this can add up you in the wrong way real fast going through a gauntlet like this. Well, this this is like playing against the 27 Yankees, right? <laughs> uh, going down this lineup without question. Well, you know, Brian, the bottom line is I, 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 th- I really believe our players have to believe in themselves. They have to believe, first of all, that they can win the game. And you know what I saw at Notre Dame last week between that uh, that seven minute mark and eleven minute of the first period, eleven minute mark of the fourth period. I believe they're capable of for a full game, and uh, it starts this week. Now, is it a uh, can we make the playoffs? Sure. Is it going to be easy? Hell no. Uh, but 
there's an opportunity. There's a pathway, okay? And the pathway is you've got some titans out in front of you, and you can figure out a way to knock them off. You know, you can get yourself into into the playoffs because of, you know, the old strength of schedule, RPI, quality win factor, the three big the three biggies that determines the at-large bit. And believe me, all ACC teams are at-large bids because we don't have a, a league or a playoff system, so to speak. Uh, so there is a pathway, but Syracuse is going to have some damage. The, the, play, I, the team, and I said at the beginning of the season, you see ups and downs. The team is fun to watch especially on offense. And I think we've addressed three of the four areas that, that, that we need to get better in, offense, defense, uh, and goaltending. And now we got to shore up uh, face-offs. And, you know, they got to figure out a way, the face-off guys, to muck it up out there, you know. And, and now you got to create 50-50 balls. And we got to get some mean people on the wings that want to uh, go get the ball. Because, like I said, we get the ball. The offense is devastating. They will score goals. Uh, that is a fact. And, you know, re- realistically, the Orange probably have to win at least three of these games. To, they have to win two to be eligible for the postseason, and right. pro- probably at least three to you know have a legit chance to do that. That means you've beaten at least uh, Duke or Virginia, so you've beaten one of the top uh, few teams uh, in the country on the road if you, if you've done that. Uh, but Kyle Federley is our guest. Will be on the call of uh, Cuse in Princeton a Saturday. That's a nooner. You can hear that over on uh, TK ninety nine eleven thirty Orange. Pre-game with Tim Leonard, and you mentioned the women, and uh, you know the women's ACC. They have those other teams. They've got AQs, and how about the the newest team in the country? Kyle Clemson will be here this weekend, and man, that they are. I'm not saying they're going to beat Syracuse here this weekend, but this is a an impressive debut season down there in South Carolina for them. It is, and they did it. They did it uh, the the new way, Brian. The new way, the modern way now, which is they went to the transfer portal and they got a bunch of players, and again, older girls. Uh, that are out there playing, and they're good. I mean, this is a solid Clemson team that is, you know, yeah, they've lost some games in the ACC, but they're not getting blown out. They're losing by two and three and four goals. So it's going to be a tough test. It's a big game out at CNS High School. It's, mm-hmm. it's free, obviously, to go out there and watch them play. Uh, I know we we dropped off the goals there yesterday, and everybody's excited. Everybody that was out there is excited about it. So they're kind of wondering how big the crowd's going to be. But you get, again, we were talking about lethal offenses. Huh. This team has got a lethal offense. I said at the beginning of the year that this team's going to be real good. I didn't expect this good. I mean, you talk about an offense where I don't even know, Brian, who you concentrate on. Because if you, you try and shut down Megan Tyrell, who's one of the leaders of the nation in scoring, you know, then Emma Ward and, and Megan Carney and Emma Tyrell are going to beat you. And then they got dynamic midfielders out there. Sarah Cockrell, Maddie Baxter, you know, Natalie Smith, they're just speedsters. Those that can run. And boy, we found the key this year without question. Delaney Schweitzer in the cage has been an absolute beast out there. Four times she has been the ACC Defensive Player of the Week out there because of save performances that she puts on. So another thing, if we can get the ball... This is a lethal offense, and you, you know, we talked about the guys. You said anything with a six uh, on the, on shots on goal is pretty impressive. Mm-hmm. How about how about a seventy eight percent shots on goal with the with the women? So, uh, the uh, a lethal scoring, deadly scoring. Uh, offense. Do you are they the clear favorites for the title right now, Kyle? I mean, Northwestern's sitting there number two. Obviously, that was a one goal game earlier right. in the season. The thirteen and zero right now. Still Carolina and BC after this week, so those are massive games uh, to come. How how far ahead of the pack is Syracuse? Is, is it slim, or do you think there's a gap right now? No, I, I think it's slim, and I'll tell you, and I'll tell you why it's slim, uh, Brian. <laughs> Ask North Carolina two years ago, who was beating everybody by an average of 17 to 8. They were 22 and 0. Guess what? BC won the national championship. Mm-hmm. So there's no such thing as, you know, uh, I, I, on any one day, any one game, you can have a bad shooting day. You can have the perfect offensive plan, the perfect execution, but all of a sudden you just can't, you know, throw the ball in the ocean off the jersey pier. It's just a bad day shooting and you lose. And that's exactly what happened to North Carolina two years ago and on the women's side. They just had a bad day, and instead of being undefeated and running away the one of the best teams ever, they go home and B.C. gets gets the trophy. So, to me, there's no such thing as a clear favorite in this game. There, 
in this sport. And the reason, one of the big reasons is, is because on the, on the girls' side, it's called draw control. On the uh, boys' side, it's called face-off. That is the determining difference in this game. You can get back in the game with the old make-it-take-it uh, uh, type of thing, where you can uh, score a goal, make it, and take it right back on, on the face-off or the draw. And so you never know what can happen in this sport. Is Syracuse, can Syracuse win the title? Absolutely they can. And they have a good enough team to do it, too. Am I going to sit here and say they're going to do it? I like to think we're going to do it, but, you know, it's a long road. Everybody's, you know, we're number one this, number one that. That's great. Like I said about North Carolina two years ago, that I'm only concerned about who's number one on Memorial Day. That's it. That's the only thing that matters, and that's the only thing that people remember. And uh, I'd say that is certainly the attitude of Kayla Trainer and the, the whole team as well. Looking forward to seeing how uh, that season wraps up. All right, Kyle, you'll, you'll be close enough to the Jersey Shore this weekend. You can throw something in the ocean uh, <laughs> if you want to. So uh, enjoy the trip to Princeton, and uh, we'll catch up again soon. All right, sounds good, Brian. You have a good weekend. That is Kyle Federley. He and uh, Tim Leonard. Tim will be on the show later. How about that? We, we just got everybody. We got the whole kit and caboodle. Uh, they'll be down uh, at Class of 52 Stadium at Princeton. Come on, Brent. Not the football stadium? What's up with that? Class of 52 Stadium on a Saturday. Nooner, 11.30 pregame over on TK. All right, we'll take a break. Much more to come after this. Uh, maybe a little little update. The man that sort of knows has a little like a little sprinkle, a little, little touch of something for you. Maybe coming up next that you'll have to ask fact, act fast on, he said. Or you can call in, 315-437-7644, and we can uh, you know yell at each other or talk pleasantly about whatever you'd like. Back after this, it's QSportsTalk.com and ESPN Radio. 